What up, everybody? This is your boy, Tech G, back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 221,002 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you are going to learn about password, best practices, account management, disabling auto run, data encryption, and patch and update management. All right, so let's talk about password best practices. So passwords are the key to almost everything we do online, and we will all probably have multiple passwords that we use throughout the day. Unfortunately, not all passwords are equally secure, and some are very easy to break. Choosing hard to hack passwords and managing them securely can sometimes seem inconvenient, and as an administrator, it is important to enforce a strong password policy that requires users to adhere to strict guidelines to gain access to the network. So let's talk about setting strong passwords. So password strength is a measure of the effectiveness of a password against guessing or brute force attacks. The strength of a password is a function of length, complexity, and unpredictability. Guidelines for creating a strong password should include requirements that outline a minimum length and a mixture of alphanumeric symbols and characters. The use of a password generator that can aid in the creation of a strong password 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 expiration so there is currently a debate surrounding as to whether or not implementing a password expiration policy is a dying concept and i personally believe that it is a dying concept because i hate changing passwords but for the time being as it directly relates to the comp to your a plus 220 1002 exam a password best practice is the implementation of a password expiration a password expiration policy which forces a user to change their password after a specified amount of time, minimizes an unauthorized user from gaining access to the password by way of social engineering, brute force, or some other type of attack. Let's talk about a screensaver password. So to minimize unauthorized users from gaining access to a computer that is currently in use, the authorized user of the computer should be required to put their computer screensaver on that would require a user to enter the correct password to unlock the screensaver to gain access to the computer. And to set up a screensaver password in Windows 10, just simply go to the settings and the personalization area and Mac, go to desktop and screensaver and then go to security and privacy. Let's talk about a BIOS UEFI password. So BIOS UEFI passwords, they prevent unauthorized users from booting a computer, booting from removable devices, and changing BIOS UEFI settings without permission. Now note that the BIOS UEFI password can be bypassed by resetting the CMOS on the motherboard by using a jumper block or pushing a button to reset the CMOS. If the jumper block or push button is not present, you can simply Simply remove the CMOS battery for a few minutes and that too will reset the CMOS. Requiring passwords. So overall, a password policy, this is a set of rules designed to enhance computer security by encouraging users to employ strong passwords and to use them properly. A password policy is often part of an organization's official regulations and may be taught as part of security awareness training. Either the password policy is merely advisory or the computer system forces users to comply with it. Admins can and enforce a password policy through the local security policy and group policy in Windows and password policies, they can require users to do the following. They can require them to change the passwords periodically, inform users prior to a password that is on the verge of expiring, enforce minimum password links, enforce the use of alpha numeric and special characters, prevent the reuse of old passwords by keeping track of the past passwords, and enforce a password lockout after a specified number of unsuccessful logins. Now to create or adjust password settings in Windows 10, you can just go to your settings, accounts, and the sign in options to change or enforce the password policies in the group policy management console. You will simply go to your computer configuration, Windows settings, security settings, account policies, and then select the password policy. 
Let's talk about account management. So account management, this helps to minimize unauthorized access to workstation settings and the network. In the following management settings, they will detail how to enhance account management security. So the first one is restricting user permissions. So restricting user permissions can help minimize damage or prevent system-wide changes to a workstation and to the network. The group policy or local security policy outlines additional restrictions that can be implemented to restrict user permissions. Let's talk about log on time restrictions. So log on time restrictions can be set by a system administrator to prevent users accounts from being used during certain times of the day, such as after business hours or before the start of the business day. Disabling guest accounts. So you want to disable guest accounts in Windows to help avoid potential security risks. If a visitor needs to access the internet, you need to go ahead and set up a guest wireless network that does not connect to the business network if possible. Now, if this is your own personal internet at your house, do what you want to do. Failed attempts lockout. So the account lockout threshold policy setting, this determines the number of failed sign-in attempts that will cause a user's account to be blocked. A locked account cannot be used until you reset it or until the number of minutes specified by the account lockout duration policy setting expires. We have the timeout screen lock. So you want to use an automatic screen locking to help safeguard a system. If a user forgets to lock the system manually and to enable automatic screen locking in Windows 10, just go to settings, personalization, then click lock screen. You can manually lock a Windows computer by simply pressing the Windows key in L or by pressing control alt delete and then selecting lock computer and Mac. You can select control shift eject or control shift power. If any jet key is not present on the keyboard. Changing default usernames and passwords. So it is important to change default admin account usernames and passwords for Soho routers and other devices as soon as possible. Default usernames and passwords for these devices are readily available in the device's documentation and this stuff can be found online. Let's talk about basic Active Directory functions. So the Windows server environment is where basic Active Directory functions take place. Now keep in mind Active Directory is beyond the scope of the CompTIA A plus 221002 exam. But if a support technician has access to Active Directory, basic user account functions can be accessed in the MMC or the Microsoft Management Console or in the Active Directory users and computers folder. Now let's talk about creating, deleting, resetting, unlocking, and disabling an account. So to create an account in Active Directory, you would simply just select action, new, and then select user. And some of the tasks that can be performed after a new account is created, you could just simply right click the user's name and you will be able to do some account deletion, which will essentially remove a user from Active Directory. You can do a password reset or unlock and this will reset a password or unlock a locked out account and you can disable an account. And this will basically deactivate a user while keeping the user's account and records in Active Directory. Let's talk about disabling auto run. So auto run, this is a component of Microsoft Windows that dictate what actions the system takes when a CD, USB drive, or flash card is connected to a computer. Disabling auto run will prevent CDs, DVDs, or USB drives from automatically starting, which will prevent any possible malware from infecting the system before you can scan the media. And to disable auto run in Windows through the local group policy, you would just click start and then the search field type gpedit.msc go to the computer configurations admin templates windows components autoplay policies turn off autoplay then click enabled and okay mac it does not support auto run but you can select apps to run at the startup you would just hit the apple menu at the top left of your macbook system preferences users and groups and then go to log in items. All right, let's talk about data encryption. So to encrypt folders or drives, just simply use these steps. You want to right click the folder or drive and then select properties, advance, encrypt contents to secure the data and then click the OK button.
And finally, let's talk about patch and update management. So patch and update management is the process of managing a network of computers by regularly performing patch and update deployments to keep computers up to date. In Windows, the Microsoft Windows Server Update Service is used for operating system application patches and updates of Microsoft products and Mac the server software update service provides the same functionality for computers controlled in the Mac server environment and Linux distributions. They use various programs to manage their updates. All right. So let's do some of this wonderful check on learning, shall we? So the first question is uh, a strong password that meets the password complexity requirement should contain. What is it? Uppercase letters, digits, non-alphanumeric characters if permitted, or a combo of characters from at least two character groups. So a strong password that meets the password complexity requirement should contain what? The correct answer is a combination of characters from at least two character groups. So uppercase, lowercase numbers and special characters will make a strong password. Next question. Which of the following account management security measures narrows down a user's computer access to specified hours? Is it principle of least privilege, guest account, failed login attempts lockout, or login time restrictions? So which one of these will narrow down a user's computer's access to specified hours? Correct answer is uh, login time restrictions. And the final question is, which of the following password policy settings determine the number of unique new passwords that must be associated with the user account before an old password can be reused? Is it password history setting, maximum password age setting, account lockout threshold setting, or minimum password age setting? So which of these will determine the number of unique new passwords that must be associated with the user account before you can use an old password? The correct answer is uh, the password history setting. All right. So in summary, we've talked about password best practices, account management, disabling auto run, data encryption, and patch and update management. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, hit the like button, share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also, go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A+, 221,000 to examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.